Hey everyone, it's Apache here and welcome back to another episode of Vintage Story here on the Aura Fury server. Thank you for joining me today and continuing to show you support for the series. If you do enjoy this episode, please leave a like and a comment and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. I'm really excited today. It is now springtime and the bushes are ripe. Also, these ones I have already collected, but these ones did actually flower and become ripe as well. So we know we can actually tuck them all the way back inside there and they will be perfectly fine. But this is brilliant because this means that I can actually go around and collect all of these. And then we can head out and actually do some exploring rather than being stuck around here close to where the food is. So that's pretty much what I want to do today. I want to have an exploration episode. I do have a couple of chores to do first though. Uh, because I've got to take all of the leaves off these trees. I've made up some copper shears here. Um, and so we're going to come over here. And basically, first of all, my job will be just to remove all of these leaves. And then to take the trees down. And this is hopefully going to give us enough uh, maple wood to be able to lay out at least the foundations for a couple more buildings. Um, and then, of course, we're going to need a lot more thatch to be able to actually complete them. So yes, this is my first job. Meet me out in the field somewhere where I, when I find something interesting to show you. We have found our first bit of copper here. So I'm going to collect all of this up off the floor and then we're going to dig down and grab the stuff from underneath the ground. I'll leave that on there because that's where I'm going to dig down under. And there's also some quartz up here as well. Not too interested in the quartz for now. Um, I have found a couple of other quartz veins and got a bit of quartz at least. Uh, but yeah, we're going to dig down here. I'm going to put my torch on my offhand. Um, this is what I usually do when I um, go caving. So, not go caving, well, go, go mining for copper. Just place something above my head there. And then when you're still on the soil, just open a bit up around you. And we can already see the copper is right here, so it's not far down at all. But if you grab a bit of soil from around where you are standing here, then it means you've got stuff to pillar back up with afterwards. And it's usually, the copper at least, is usually pretty shallow to the surface. Uh, this is poor quality, unfortunately. Uh, but the poor quality veins tend to be larger in size. So you actually end up with about the same as if it was a rich or a medium. Um, I've, I've seen to find anyway, I mean, it's probably not true at all, but <laughs> it's a, an all right rule of thumb to go by some of the time. And so let's see how much we get from this. So out of that vein, we got 29 poor chunks of native copper and we got a little bit of crystallized chunks of na native copper as well. So we may be able to get some crystals out of that. Um, I think at least, I think that's how it works. You have a chance of getting some crystals out of it. Of more berry bushes here. I'm going to actually grab that one. So I do want a lot of these cranberries. Now hopefully as we go further south, we'll actually start seeing these becoming ripe. That's what I'm hoping. So we can actually go out quite far without having to double back to get more uh, food. Yes, I think I'm going to carry on looking around and see what we can find. So just underneath the surface here, we have what looks like a ruins. We'll go into here and have a look what's around. Oh, yep. Yeah. I don't think it's been found yet because the wooden planks are still there. But we will grab some uh, hay so we can block up that. And make sure the flood water goes down. We've got a chest here. Doesn't look like there's anything in it. It's one of the heavily collapsed ones. But I'm going to make sure I take up at least all of this aged wooden planks. There is a chance that this place has a, um, a little cellar as well. So we'll have a look under there. Dig down a bit to see if there is anything. That's actually... Oh, there is a rusty gear. Excellent. 
We'll grab that. And usually it's in the centre of these ones. But yeah, it doesn't look like it. We do have some of these cobble skulls though, that's good. So we'll grab these as well. Yep, I will clear this place out and move onwards. And also while we're in the area, I want to gather up a few of these cat mints because we want to get some bees up and running uh, in spring and summer so that we have some honey ready. Um, and I'll also definitely want to start making some lanterns, so I'm going to need some candles as well. So we need lots and lots of flowers for this. And I want to use a combination of the cat mints and the uh, heather for our flowers around the various different uh, skeps that we're going to have. Um, and we're going to make a, another little roundhouse which is going to be a chandlery, uh, which is a candle maker's. And just a bit further south, I found a load of heather as well, so we're going to grab this. I'm not sure if the chandlers is going to be one of the next uh, roundhouses we set up, but it's definitely going to be one that we will be planning very, very soon. There is also a lot of peats here, and there's also a giant uh, thing, a seam of uh, quartz over there on the cliff. But I think that's one we're actually going to leave where it is, and we're not going to grab that one. Because uh, it will damage the landscape too much around the area where we're living. But taking up these flowers isn't really going to make too much difference. And also I think this peat is something we'll probably keep where it is as well. So we've arrived at one of the nearby traders. I want to see what they've got for sale. What's coming up? Hello Loon. Now you are a survival goods trader. Do we actually have to have a free hand for you? Let's just eat these berries. There we go. Excellent, right. So, you are selling a wolf pup. I'd really like to be able to set, uh, to buy this wolf pup if I could, but I can't. Uh, we've already got some fur gloves. Um, so there's nothing else really we want to buy. What can we sell to you? We can sell leather. Two leather for one... It's not really good, but charcoal, um, that's very good. So if we made a charcoal pit, we could come back here and make quite a lot of money. Uh, but other than that, nothing but we've really able to get. What I'm really looking for is to be able to save up a lot of gears so that when we find, uh, I believe it is actually the survival goods trader with uh, the lanterns able to buy. They're actually fairly cheap, um, so we will be able to purchase some lanterns to help us uh, with lighting around the base, because we're going to need a lot of lanterns as we go through this series, uh, and trying to make them all might be a bit difficult, so we may actually have to buy a load as well. Um, other things I'm looking to buy is carpets, uh, so I can do some hidden lighting, um, and some paintings and stuff like that uh, but the wolf pups the reason why you get those is because you buy them for either six or seven gears and then you can sell them for eight to ten gears um, so it's actually worth buying them and stocking them up uh, so that you can go out and actually sell them all and make a lot of gears in the process um, a couple of other things with these uh, there are things like the seed vessels and the other different types of cracked vessels that you can actually buy which make very good decorations around the base, as well as you can also then sell those off to uh, commodities traders for a profit as well. There is actually a link in, um, well, a thread on the forum on the main uh, Vintage Story site, which shows you all the different trades that are possible within these uh, traders. Uh, and which ones are very good for profit, which ones are not worth anything. And it just tells you everything you need to know about the traders, basically. If I remember, I'll try and put a link down in the description for that so that you can see it. So out in the middle of the Andesite Desert, and um, we found a ruin, so it hasn't been touched yet. So we have a tool vessel here. Let's see what we have in here. Probably not too much. We got 
yeah, a couple of flint, flint knives. It's not too much. But we can dig down under here and see if there's anything else, I suppose. Maybe. So we have some underground stuff just here. It is down to andesite rock already, so it doesn't look like there's going to be much under here. And indeed there isn't. And underneath this bit? No. Okay. And then underneath here? No. Oh well, I thought there may be something here, but at least we got that vessel. Oh, just walking through here at night, I found a little bit more copper. We're going to grab all of this. And work our way down underground again. So we'll get the shovel. Now we're right down on uh, onto the uh, stones here. And there it is, okay. So cap us off on top, make sure drifters don't fall down. This is still poor, so it'll actually stack with what we already have. That's very good. I hardly have any inventory space left now. So I've got to make a decision. Do I just put everything in a chest and carry on for a while? Or do we head back to base, put down all the stuff we've got, and actually uh, uh, smelt up some of this copper that we've got as well? I think that's actually what I might do. So I'm going to uh, make some clay moulds uh, so we've got those and I think I'm going to make hmm, I haven't really decided what we're going to do with this copy yet but yeah let me get back to base and we'll get all of that stuff sorted so we are back at base and I've done a little bit of preliminary work I have got some charcoal been uh, burnt down over here and we've also made a few moulds ready for this so where did I put those? I think they were in here. Um, so I've made a hammer mould, which I'm not going to use yet because I've already got a hammer here. Uh, we've got a pickaxe mould, which I'm definitely going to want, and some ingots as well. Um, I've also got an anvil because I think we're probably going to need an anvil over here so that we can make some more shears and scythes and stuff like that. Uh, I've got a shovel and a prospecting pick but I do already have a prospecting pick as well so I'm going to hope that we've actually got enough for all of this so if we place down over here you can see I've got a hoe as well so we've got the shovel there we've got the anvil that's going to be 9, 10, 11 um, or is this I can't remember if these are one yeah, no, yeah. 100 metal 100 units of metal is one ingot um, so that is 11 and then we've got where's that one? pickaxe mould so that'll be 12 and then we have some ingots as well we can just put the rest of it there we go and the amount of copper we got from our little expedition was in here uh, we got 256 plus 27 so we'll see how much that makes uh, in here we can go oh no I need to put the croc in first oh no, no we're crucible sorry so put the crucible in and then we can put let's see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 120 one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. There's 12. 14 ingots in total. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and so now we need to come over and actually take out all of this uh, charcoal. We don't need too much, so I'll just uncover those bits for now. And take out some of this. God, this is even slow with the, uh, with the iron pickaxe. I didn't realise it was so slow for this. In skulls I actually made uh, an 11 by 11 by 4 charcoal bit, but I forgot how long it actually takes to get all of this out of it. But I think, how many is about 9, 10, 11, 12, I think I'll do 16 total. And that should be fine. 
for us to heat up all of this. There's 14, 15, and 16. Okay. So, a trick with this, add in some sticks first to get it up to temperature. So, there we go. Um, these sticks will run down really quickly, but it'll allow this to get up to 700 uh, degrees, and then you'll waste less charcoal um, just getting this up to uh, the medium heat. And then you put the charcoal in to take it up and above uh, the heat that it needs to be able to smelt down this copper. So while this is winding its way along, we will place this copper back into here. I'll place the hammer in there as well for now. Uh, you can see I've been dealing with my maple. I've got 37 maple saplings and we have all of this. I'm going to grab, actually yeah, all of it. Why not? Um, because I want to have a look over there at a new foundations of a new building. Uh, we'll see how this is going along. Okay, so you can see we're up to 630 now. 640. And when I think when this gets to 680, it starts slowing down when it gets to the very top. So we'll place the charcoal in then and it will enable it to get much, much higher. So there is 680. No, let's, let's take it a bit more. It's actually still going quite fast. So there is 690. Yeah, I think I'll swap it over now. So it gets up to 700. That's perfect. And then 701. Okay, pretty much perfect. So it takes 12 sticks. Remember that, 12 sticks to be able to get up to the temperature you need it. For now, I'll just stick these in here. I haven't got a proper labelled up storage system yet, um, which I will be doing soon. Um, I just need to get some more chests up and stuff like that. So, fairly boring stuff. But as you can see, this is now getting up to temperature, but it is going to take quite a while. So... In the meantime, let's grab, where is my side? Because we're going to want all of this grass from up here. So I've extended this patch out here quite a bit. Just so that we've got a nice little rise here that we can work with. But we are going to need to get all the grass off here. And then we can start placing down some logs for foundation for a new build up here. So we're supposed to have a measuring tool on here with the VS HUD mod. I've not used it before, so I'm not too sure um, how it's supposed to work. I think I will want this building probably around here. So I'm going to measure from here. And I think it is dot measure. Uh, okay, so dot, dot measure start from here. Okay, so let's actually label that. And then we come all the way up to... Hmm, this isn't actually very far, is it? But I think we'll actually want to pack this land a bit further and take it to, say, here. So what are what is this bit here? So we say end. And then we say... Calc. Uh, calc block. 18, okay. Um, so we could do... Let's just think. We could do a 17 by 17 build. Because I want the entrance to still be um, a odd number. So let's just come over here and make sure this is going okay. Yep, we're about halfway there. And whilst this is still going, I want to take you over actually into a browser and show you this plots thing that I've got. So if I do that, we should be over in uh, in my browser here. And so you can see this is plots.co.uk and this is what you will see when you get to the ellipse builder. And so we want to see, we were saying a 17 by 17. And so that is five across and then two and then one, and then one and then two. Okay, so it's pretty much like the last one, but we just with one extra 
uh, block in it on the side so that's okay that's easy enough and this site is really cool it shows you um, so like, let's do a 25 by 25 so this is that circle there I tend to use it on this mode here in the 3D mode so you can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then 2 and then 2 and then 1 but you can also add it into 2D mode here and this will show you a, a, a topological overview of it and it, it shows it a little bit differently it says 4 then 2 then 2 then 1 because this block here and this block here are shared um, between the different axes and you can see it has a single axis um, single block axis for symmetry um, here so that is plots um, it's a brilliant tool which I've used for a very long time um, both in Minecraft and in Vintage Story to allow me to make proper squircles so let's go back to game there we go back into game here and we are still waiting for this to come up to temperature so I'll come back over here and we can say that we will want the build to start so there's the five and then two and then one and then one and then two and then one two three four five and then this is where we're gonna have to come back out and fill this back in here uh, so we want two and then one and then one and then one two three four five and then two let's just see make sure I've got this right no this isn't right is it so there's the two there's the one there's the one there's the two so this should actually be one two three four five okay uh, oh, I don't have an axe on me at the moment. So let me grab an axe. But just before we do that, our crucible is now ready to pour. So we bring that incredibly white hot uh, crucible into our bare hand and we fill up. First of all, pickaxe. We will want a hoe so we can actually start doing some farming. We want a shovel because we've got a lot of this stuff to dig out the soil. We want an anvil. This is going to take quite a while to fill up. 500, 600, 700, 800 and done. Okay. And we will want the rest of it just to go into it. Okay, there we go. So we'll place that down there and grab our charcoal that we didn't use out. Right, now we have to get an axe. Got one here, that's fine. And some sticks. We'll make an axe. And while I'm thinking, just eat some of this. Grab some more, and some more, and some more, there we go. Right, so let's come back over here, we can take down the bits we don't need, which is all of this actually. Up to here, okay. So we have... One, two, three, four, five. One, two, and one. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And then that be up here. One and two and one. And then one, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, one. One, two. Perfect. Right. So that is the area where we're going to want to dig out. We are also going to want the entrance to it to be here. And actually, that might be quite an interesting way of doing this. 
because the ground around it is going to be up at that height. But we can actually take these bits out because we already know that uh, the entrance to it here and this is going to all be taken down by two layers. So all of these can actually be put in as they would be normally, including these, because that's all going to be dug out anyway. And that actually just saves us a bit of time. So with this one all dug out inside, I think we might actually leave it at this height here. Obviously, I've still got a lot of wood to put in, but I want to try and place another building in as well. Because back here, I think we're going to have plenty of space for another building. I'm trying to decide whether I want it on this level or up on the rise. And I think this one might actually be okay just up on the rise just here. So let's have a look at this one. This is going to be a 14 diameter. So if I want this away from that building just a little bit, you know, one, two, three, and four, and then it is just one and two and one, and then like that, two and one, two and one, two, three, four, one, two. Oh no, this is a little bit close, isn't it? Yeah, that is a little bit close on either side, so we're actually going to have to move this further back a bit, maybe, or reduce it down in size a bit. But it's something to think about anyway. I think I'm going to have to have a look at this both uh, during the day and from an overhead camera point of view. Okay, so you can see from where this is, this really is not going to work. So I think if we pull it over a little bit more, um, I'm still going to need how much? A one, two, three entrance out uh, gap out from the wall. And we'll definitely want at least a one wide gap from here. So if we said this is one, two, three, then we could bring it one further over. But looking at this, even bringing it one further over from here isn't really going to do it. So yeah, another building of this size would not fit here. We would have to do it much uh, narrower or on a much smaller diameter. And I don't really want to be working towards some very, very small buildings like that at the moment. I want to try and get the main infrastructure of the, uh, the little settlement in first, and then we can work out some of the much smaller places later on. I think that is where we are going to end things for today. We've got into the Copper Age now ourselves and we've started working out some of the rest of the village. And we've also got into spring and we're able to actually go out exploring now. So we'll be able to get a lot more stuff a lot quicker. So thank you very, very much for joining me today. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like, comment and subscribe on the video and to the channel. And I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me by subscribing to the channel and liking and commenting on the videos. Thanks. See you next time.